and welcome to Awake Ones. I'm Alexandra Wenman. I'm Sally Points at Ash. I'm Lorraine Flaherty. And I'm Elena Bittinghausen. And yes, we'd love to introduce you to our dear friend Milena. And Milena is going to talk to us today all about breathing, breathwork, rebirthing, and I guess all of the benefits of breathing, which <laughs> <laughs> obviously is very ne necessary in today's world. <laughs> yeah. Any world. Any world. <laughs> Yeah, actually we do breathe all day. This is what fascinates me about working with the breath, because we all do it. It's not like you have to learn a new discipline, or you just have to put your focus on your breath, and it changes your whole life. Yeah. So how did you get started working with uh, breath work? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I started to work with um, Katya, and Katya was a rebirthing breath worker. I did not know you know, what it was about, but I just connected to her and I remember I had my first session and I, she literally just put me down and asked me to breathe. And then she helped me to breathe in different parts of my body and this session was so deep and my mind was freaking out because, you know, I didn't, I thought I didn't do anything. I just breathed into my whole body again and it was so transformational and after one session, I knew I want to do this because it's so simple, but yet so yeah. deep. Yeah. And how long did all your training take you to learn this, this um, discipline? I think it's a journey, you know, it's a one year training, but actually you learn to have the, just not judge anything, but just always have the awareness on the breath. And the more patient you are with yourself and just follow what's happening inside of your body, that's what you offer to your clients, you know. And um, on the one hand, it's a, with the type of breath work, you unlock your breathing mechanism, so it's a quite physical thing, right. you know. But there's also a spiritual aspect because if you breathe into parts of your body where there's, uh, where you haven't put any attention, you know, suddenly the memory starts to, let's say, kick in mm -hmm. and things are starting to come up. And so each session yeah. is different. Yeah, I mean, you, you know probably. Uh, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone knows. Um, so it's a never-ending story. It's a beautiful journey. <laughs> yeah. And what's the, the, the key to us? Because I did rebirthing mm -hmm. as part of my training so oh, we were introduced okay. to it as, as part of what we just yes. not in great depth not enough mm -hmm. to, to actually practice it but to to get an idea of it so can you talk a little bit about what the process is because obviously just breathing into the body but there are also in the rebirthing processes there are different types of breath and using the breath yes. in order to access those inner places and information so you talk a little bit about yes. how that works yes, and what course. people can experience yeah so in rebirthing, um, we say that uh, we want to connect ourselves to our natural breathing rhythm. And if you look at babies, for example, mm. they have a connected breath. That it means they breathe in and they breathe out. They don't make any pause. You know, they're just connected to the circle of breath and circle of life. So um, what I teach my clients is to breathe circular again in their own rhythm. And by doing so, you have more oxygen in your body and also more energy. And that's it. Then you get into a so-called energy cycle. Mm -hmm. And um, whatever is ready for you to heal will, will come up. Some people think they're <laughs> dreaming. Some people are highly awake. It's, um, yeah. So basically, it's about first getting into a circular breath again. And by that, you will know that... Um, yeah, you will get a better feeling for your whole body. Right. Yeah. Right. As we are talking, I'm holding my breath. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, why am I so holding my breath? <laughs> going. <laughs> 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 pressure <laughs> breathing. <laughs> when sound <laughs> faints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can just take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm very conscious that that's one of the things that I do when I'm concentrating, when I'm busy, or when I'm w trying to work things out. I become very aware that I will hold my breath mm. until 
till I'm kind of ready to move to the next point. It's almost like an exclamation yeah. point at the end of a piece of work that I do. And it's taken a long time. It's only through becoming more conscious and aware that I realise. And of course, that creates a lot of tension as well to actually hold. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I forget until I realise, uh, actually. <laughs> 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 and then, yeah, that's true. And then it becomes this huge exhalation, which mm-hmm. and I, I think a lot of us do that, but don't realise. But you know, I feel it's not about doing a perfect breathing cycle. It's about just observing your breath yeah. and not judge it. Okay, I'm holding it. Okay, I just let go. Mm. Because with all that knowledge, you know, yeah. I have, I could also say, no, that's not perfect. And it should be this way. Now, everyone has a unique, it's like a fingerprint. It's like a unique imprint of breathing. And the less you judge your own breathing and just, you know, be with yourself, then you give yourself space to explore yeah. this again. Yeah. yeah. The worst time is in tunnels. Because yeah. I used to have a really, really bad phobia <laughs> of being in tunnels. And that one can be really quite dangerous because actually holding my breath until I get to the other side to actually see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. And uh, when I've ended up travelling abroad, when the tunnels were a lot longer than the ones that I've had to go through in the UK, like under the tent, oh, it doesn't God. take very long. So I can actually hold my breath for the whole distance of the time Ooh. until I get to the other. But then there have been times when I'm in a really long tunnel and I actually start, I can feel myself start. Maybe you don't do it while you're driving, you bloody go in my pocket. Well, no, I know. <laughs> so that was the point at which I, I had to start paying attention mm. to it and then do some work on this. <laughs> I love the fact that Lorraine's a hypnotist <laughs> and she so needs a hypnotist. Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, <laughs> clearly, <laughs> today, I'm practice holding my breath <laughs> all the way in the yeah. tube. <laughs> Exactly, tube tube. Tube. Oh, tube. 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 And I used, to, I used to be able to do two or three lengths of this pool underwater. Wow. Um, it was amazing. Like I, and I But that's because you're a mermaid. I am a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm a throwback to the Maria or something. It's dangerous though. Yeah, and I remember, I was, like, I was pretty young when I started doing it. But I remember, like, and like almost, you know, getting to the end and going, I've got to get to the end, I've got to get to the end, I've got to get to the end. And then, <laughs> like, nearly blacking out. It's like, you know. I'm sure you could better yourself. I'm, I'm sure in a past life I was probably one of those um, free divers or something. They're amazing. <laughs> yeah, and so you almost go into like that meditative state. You have to go into another state. state. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. free diving is incredible. Yeah. 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 There is a, a, a Zen monk who is a free diver. Hero Hosen's hubby, I think, is, yeah, and obviously calls on that, that mm. centred, tra- almost trance state. To, uh, to break records. Apparently, mm. <laughs> I'm talking like I'm a free diver. <laughs> um, it's almost like the water's holding you as well, so it is like that womb like yeah. um, state that you have to go into yeah. um, with the lack of oxygen as well. Yeah, that's actually a good point with the water, you know. Um, when you breathe in, when you're in your bathtub and you just start to breathe in your bathtub and you go all over water, you know, with your ears and everything. And you breathe consciously, it's, it's like you may get into this feeling, oh, I feel so home mm. and so cozy because it reminds you of being in the womb. Mm. And for me, it's a way to de-stress, you know. If mm. I have a bathtub, I go in and I just breathe. That's this one over here. I chant in the bath. I nice. meditate, breathe, chant. Yes. yes. Yeah, blow bubbles. <laughs> With my mouth. <laughs> That's what she Not said. the at-home jacuzzi. <laughs> I, live in a, I live in an Art Deco property, so I have um, kind of a half-size bath, and I'm a double-size human. <laughs> and I'm six over six foot tall, mm-hmm. so actually to get under the water would be... <laughs> I feel like the legs are touching the ceiling. Like like I'll leave you with that vision. <laughs> just put your face in. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, on the mat. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Head, yoga headstand. <laughs> Legs out. That'd be Sally free diving. The feet would still be out the top of the sea. <laughs> I've reached the bottom. Oh my god! Oh my god! We're losing it today. I think there's not enough air in here. Maybe there's too much air. Yeah, there's too much air. Yeah, I think so. Oh 
good. So when so you started your breathwork journey a year ago? Not actually this year. This year. This year in May. And yeah. what's been the most profound moment for you on that journey so far? Mm. You know, when I took the course, I had this gut feeling something deep will come up for me. And I had mm. a lot of sessions where I um, I saw my birth. You know, I, wa I was a premature child and I had an operation of the heart. And I literally relived that, you know, I, I was this child and I felt people opening up my heart and doing things and um, and also was in an incubator. Wow. And these experiences, they made me understand who I really am. You know, you think, oh my God, that's terrible. In that moment, yeah, it hurt. But mm -hmm. first, when you keep breathing, no matter what comes, mm. it goes, you right. know? Yeah. And this is maybe one of the most profound things Breathwork taught me. No matter what comes up in my life, an emotion, a thought, like bad energy, and you can just breathe through it. Yeah. Mm. And um, yeah, for example, I remembered in the incubator, I took the decision, I'm alone in my life, you know? This feeling of loneliness so many of us know. Mm. And I realized, wow, I decided that it's not life itself is not lonely. It was me because I was there wanting to play, you know, and I looked and there was no one. Yeah. And um, yeah, that I actually relived my birth was very profound for me. It can set you up for life, can it? I mean, it does set you up for life, really. I, I yes. remember I did a, a session with Sandra and Marcus Ray, who they do yes. amazing rebirthing work. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've got a dear friend, Kira Longman, who's who's trained with them, and she's mm -hmm. been training with them for years. And she she said to me once, "Oh, let me book you a session." And so she got me a session with them. And so I had the two of them and wow. Kira holding me in this process. Mm -hmm. And I think it was probably one of the most emotional, gut wrenching, but very uh, transformative experiences I've ever had. Um, and it's like, I didn't really know what to expect. I think, you know, it's, it's such profound and powerful work. It, it's something that I guess, you know, if, if I ever spoke to anyone, I'd be like, don't enter into it lightly because it is very, very powerful, very deep. But it showed me, you know, I died at birth. I was like, my mother was told she was basically having a stillborn and, you know, I was, I, I call it, you know, I had a, an early near death experience. I must have done because some part of me still somewhere else. <laughs> But yeah, like the, the process of like getting stuck, being half breech, being turned around the wrong way and then being high forceps yanked out. It's almost like I see the pattern now mm. where projects in my life, you know, I start something, I get really excited about it and then I stop and then I'm like, oh, I didn't actually finish that. You know, it's a bit like my life. I got born, died and then it was like, oh, better restart something like resuscitation mm -hmm. but Lorraine and I did an amazing regression back to both of our births as well and had a look at it afterwards and like you say you kind mm -hmm. of you can access those memories yeah. um, and by going into that sort of trance state I'm yes. sure the breathing helps you drop into yes. those memories to be able to access the patterns that you carry forward mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, it's very much that isn't it I mean if you think any meditation or even hypnosis is a focused state of attention where you are using the breath and, and using that awareness of the breath. So you're mm. creating a trance state. So with the right intention, with the right questions, that information is going to rise to the surface. And I don't think that there is going to be any person on the planet that won't have had some kind of trauma at birth. Mm. I mean, if you just think about that experience, the idea that there you are in this cosy, warm, you know, <laughs> safe, dark space, and then suddenly, even if it's a natural birth, you're mm. hurtled through this tunnel and they're out into tunnels. But even a natural birth is going to have a, a shock factor. But I think you've just clocked it. That's where your tunnel mm. thing comes from. Oh, no, 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 it it wasn't. No, it, no, my tunnel thing came from a past life where I was buried alive with the Pharaoh because I was high priest. Um, and having looked after him in life, I was going to be looked after him in death. And they buried, they took me down the long tunnel into the chamber and then walled it up while I was still alive. So I worked out where that one came from. So I fixed that now. But I think that every person would benefit from that yeah. realisation to just go back and actually look at what they 
experienced the fears that may have started, mm. or like you said, those beliefs. Mm. I'm on my own. Yes. And whichever way you go into it, I think is it's so powerful and really necessary. Yeah. But it's interesting, you know, some people say, how can a birth be traumatic? I mean, you're born, you're alive, you want to do something. Yeah, it's true. It's not per se traumatic, no, but it can be little things, you know, when I had this experience, I realized, wow, I'm I'm super tiny and I'm so yeah. vulnerable. And even yeah. if the doctor, you know, touches me, it's a shock. It's a shock. Yeah. So everything. That was a shock. <laughs> 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 don't touch me. It's okay, don't worry, don't you. This is a really joke. Yeah. So it can be like little things um, which deeply shock you, but the, the yeah. intention was not that, you know. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And with the best will in the world, in a situation like that, not everybody is going to be the most kind, the most loving, the yeah. most aware, because people are doing a job and they're getting on with things. Yeah. And then, of course, if there is a, mm. some difficulty and a challenge in the birth, then that's going to cause all sorts of other problems. Mm. So, yeah, I just think it's... Or well, even being in the incubator in yeah. the room, you know, mm. if there was some other trauma going on in the room, yeah. I guess you're picking up on all of... Absolutely. As an adult, you can look back and say, oh, well, you know, maybe I have some issues around this because I was in an incubator and you can rationalise it. But when you're a baby that doesn't have that rationalising part of the brain active and you're just there, mm. totally reliant on those people around you for your survival, yeah. anything is going to be amplified, everything that you're experiencing, and it's going to be that confusion. And I know even in some of the sessions that I've done with people when they've gone back to that place, that some of them are really questioning, what was I thinking? <laughs> Why did I do this? And especially at that moment, there is usually amnesia for what the plan was. So whatever the person had planned to come in and experience, they're not going to remember mm -hmm. as a result of the, the, shock, the, yeah. the shock and the actual arrival of the earth plane, mm -hmm. the amnesia kicks in. And often souls feel really disconnected mm -hmm. and terrified because they've lost their connection to spirit as well they, they've suddenly in human form in a energy that is much denser much more just much more solid much more limiting you know, if you think about it before we come in we're a soul we are energy yeah. that is limitless that's free mm -hmm. and then suddenly here we are condensed mm -hmm. in this small body i think every person could benefit from just going back and mm -hmm. even just saying that, whispering that into the ear of the baby, mm -hmm. it's all right, there is a plan, mm -hmm. you know, you, this is something that you've chosen, and yeah. to be here. you're meant to be here. Yeah. 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 I think outside of the, you know, the rebirthing thing, that's, that's quite intense work if you're just daily life, you're in the middle of things. Mm. What else do you do with mm. the breath and the work that you do with the breath that's not necessarily the rebirthing? Mm -hmm. uh, exercises and practices that you have yes so basically not you know i don't say okay today we'll look at your birth <laughs> 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 no. um, but <laughs> uh, in my experience the more often i just yeah put my uh, um, awareness or my focus on the breath mm. i feel my life is a whole session you know it's like wherever I go, I'm connected to my breath. Wherever I go, I'm flowing. And if mm. not, okay, no matter. I, I just keep breathing. I, um, and this is actually the aim. You know, when you have a few sessions that you empower yourself to use the tool of the breath to feel you're the creator of your life. Mm. Okay, you have that story running, but it's only the story. It's not yeah. you. Because the more often you connect with your breath to your divinity, you realize, yeah, that's me. I'm whole. I'm complete. You know, I'm not that story. And um, I do breathing exercises every day. S s like the most simplest things, really. If it's nothing complicated, and um, yeah, yeah share some. I think yeah, yeah we should. I think yeah. we should yeah. do some. But also yeah. on your website, you've I've had a look at your website, and yes. um, I know you have a video on there of breathing exercises. Do you? And it's outdoors. Yes. Do you find it amplifies the benefit if you do it in nature? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I feel every type of healing work, if you are outside, you're at home. You know, 
you're connected naturally to this vastness, to this vast field. And when you're in a room, you don't realize, but it's, you know, closing down. And right. yeah, I, I love, like, nature is my second home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're not going to take this outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a cable issue, a lighting issue. But yeah. I think it's visualize nature. <laughs> we'll obviously put the links to your website yes. in the yeah. comments below. Um, yeah. It'd be quite nice to, to finish up on a yeah. Breathe, yeah. breathing exercise. Yeah, we could do uh, the 20 connected breaths, which is super simple. Basically, you're breathing circular 20 times. So you just sit comfortably, find a nice position, and um, I'm going to show you. You know, you can show us first, and then we'll do it. Do you think? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you just close your eyes and arrive fully where you are. Maybe take a couple of deep breaths. You know, I'm nervous myself, you know, my exhale is like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay, you know. Are you all doing it all nose? through the nose? You're breathing through the nose, yeah, it's the best if it's not blocked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you just start. So you do four ones okay. in your own rhythm, and the fifth one you inhale a bit deeper and let go. Okay. okay. And this set of five breaths you do four times. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe we should just do it the once, oh, because okay. otherwise we'll be here forever. Yeah, because <laughs> even now it's I love this work. You do it five times. It does not only take a minute, and you center. realize that you center immediately. Yeah. Any questions, ladies? No, let's get breathing. Let's, let's breathe. get breathe. breathing, yes. Okay, so close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Arrive on your seat. Take another one, another deep breath. And then just start to breathe circular in your own rhythm. Just sit in that energy for a moment. And keep breathing and slowly open your eyes. Come back here. It always takes you longer to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Why not something? Like it out there. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, and I can really see the difference in the normal, the normal way of breathing. Mm. And actually connecting with that, because I do definitely have very long pauses between my breaths. Mm. I think on that note, we're going to take a breather. <laughs> <laughs> so but we invite people to share, to, to, or to practice, mm -hmm. um, and just to see for themselves the, exactly. the differences yeah. that that's going to create. Yeah. There's no right, no wrong. No. You know, just, just breathe. Just breathe. Yes. Elena, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me here, ladies. It was a pleasure. Amazing. And thank you everyone for watching. Thank you. Thank you.